Hi, my name is Aaron Linsdow. I'm a polar explorer and motivational speaker. It's review day! Today I'm going to review the XPED XP9 or 12 or whatever it is. Is this the ultimate expedition mattress in super cold conditions? Let's find out. The XPAD XP or 9 series, are these the ultimate expedition down air mattresses? In my experience, I have to say absolutely. I used the XPAD in Yellowstone when it was minus 45 degrees. I used mine in Antarctica when it was like, I don't know, minus 100 or whatever. This thing is the bomb. Now, there are lots of down air mattresses. I've got a review to another air mattress. Check it below if you, to get to the reviews and, or the links, just click the little arrow by the video and it'll expand the text so you can uh, check out the links there. But I use this XPED air mattress simply because it's loaded with down. A traditional air mattress will freeze your keister off. Ding, ding, ding! Yeah, because it is, I wouldn't say it's impossible, but it is very difficult for your body heat to warm up this much airspace. That's why, like when you visit friends, oh, we've got an air mattress you and your spouse or whoever can sleep on, say no, no thank you, or hey, do you have five blankets? Those things are so freezing to sleep on. Now, the huge advantage of the XPED mat, it is filled with down. And as a consequence, it's like sleeping partly on a sleeping bag that's super comfy. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I inflate this particular series of air mattresses. XPED now makes two versions. Mine has the integrated foam pump where you push and it, it fills up. And then the other has a separate bag where you pull out the bag, you put it on the nozzle, you, you, you open up and mush down the bag. And then that inflates the mattress. Now the key to all expedition type air mattresses is you do not want to, under unless extreme circumstances, blow them up with this, your pie hole, your mouth. Because when you're trying to go and blow up that air mattress, what's going to happen is that your hot air, you know, your blabbing gets in there. That's not a big deal. But that, that hot air that you put in there overnight when it cools down will shrink. But more importantly, by blowing up that air mattress with your breath, you exhale a lot of water. Like this thing here, you know, you drink from it. Ah, that's good. But have you ever done the fog test on a mirror or a window, you know, or your glasses? you know, and then you rub it, all that moisture on there. When you're breathing out of your lungs, you exhale a ton of water and that will get in this bag and down pad. And as a consequence, you will get the down wet. And what happens to wet down? If you didn't know, it fails to insulate. Even though down, I mean, these sleeping bags are the ultimate down, is the best insulating material on earth, still bar none, it has an ultimate weakness. If it gets wet, it does not retain body heat. So therein lies the trouble. So about this mattress, the XPED mat, and you'll see this guy right here. And this is the Down Mat 9. It's the same thing as XP. They just keep changing the names. Uh, it, it is, uh, this is what I used in Antarctica for three months. It is the bomb. Now. I'm going to put links below to this mat and the other version with air. Uh, just, just check it out below. And also, if you could support this channel, just hit the subscribe button. That helps me keep this going, keeps you, me bringing information, motivation, travel tips, expedition material, uh, talking about books. Yeah, th this uh, huge, you, you, just by subscribing to this channel, you help me bring out this book. By the way, I talk about air mattresses and sleeping pads in this book along with Dr. Terry Williams. We talk about all the different aspects of sleeping and eating and maneuvering and camping 
in this book. There will be a link below in the video as well. So you can just check that out if you've ever wanted to do a big backpacking trip or an expedition up a mountain, ski across Antarctica, you know, and then just normal day stuff. This book has everything you need to get started in it. So before we roll this out, because once I open it, it's a kind of a process to get it mushed back in. I'm going to weigh this mattress just so you know how much it weighs. We're going to turn on my handy dandy scale here. Oh, you probably can't read it and that's okay. I'll just tell you what the number is. And that's in grams. And that is one kilogram, 24 grams. This is two pounds, four ounces. Now, for me, that is an insane amount of weight. Two pounds, four ounces. Here, wait, let's... Oh, wait, here, hang on. Check this out. I can lock it and hold it if I was really slick. And then I can hold it up. And yeah, there you go. Two pounds, four ounces. Now... For me, that is a crazy amount of weight. I, and like two pounds, four ounces, that's more weight than my summer backpack. But when you're going to extreme climates like Denali or Everest or Kilimanjaro, no, not Kilimanjaro, or the Arctic or wherever, and you're laying on this block of ice that's you know, like a mile thick, you're gonna freeze your booty off. So you've got to have something really serious. I don't like carrying the weight, but not being able to sleep and freezing at night is far worse. Don't you agree? So what we're gonna do is we're going to take this bag out and this gets this very sexy hexagonal type fabric. It's just basically nylon. And what I do, th this is one of the key tricks to these types of air mattresses as soon as you get your tent up or your tarp up or whatever is you want to get your air mattress whether it's a thermarest whether it's this thing you want to get both valve ports open now this has two ports one is the inflation guy now this is kind of hard to open and inside there you'll see a little bit of foam and you'll see why that matters in a moment but also I open the deflate valve and what that does is it allows the loft and the air mattress to actually expand. And so if you can do that, the moment you get in your tent, and also when you get in your tent, make sure you open up your sleeping bag because you want this thing to loft up as much as possible. If you leave your sleeping bag squashed until the moment you're going to want to go to sleep, you're going to freeze because that down has to take time to expand and just like in this air mattress now it's not gonna it's not going to expand that much but nevertheless it does expand some and saves you some work now one of the thing about these uh, air mattresses here is this ha this uh, the out valve has to be absolutely clear of anything uh, well, during my expedition I would get little feathers in there and at night, the mattress would slowly, slowly deflate. It's very frustrating. That, that's the thing about this is you must make sure there are no fibers, no fabric, no anything, because uh, just the design of this type of hole, it's not a screw down type, that just wipe it off and you know, wipe it off with your lip moisture there. Get that sealed up. You can hear it click and it stays incredibly sealed. And then the same thing with this, the inflator, you want to make sure that it stays sealed. Now this design is totally cool that it has an integrated hand pump to air the mattress up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to show you how this works. It's pretty slick. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna zoom in. <laughs> I'm going to add a little more light to the situation. There we go. Good. And what you do is there's a little valve here that prevents the air from coming back. But what you do is you put your palm right here on the air mattress and you push down. Now when I'm pushing, I can feel some air blowing past my hand and the better of a seal I can get with my palm the faster I can blow this air mattress up now I, I did this for like 90 days in Antarctica 
And after you're super tired, yes, you've got to air up your air mattress, and that's just the way it is. But this design, it doesn't have to have a bag. It's really pretty slick. So you just very slowly, and what I found is if I push too hard and too fast, the air blows out around my hand and I waste my effort. If you actually do this slower, it's actually more effective. So we're going to do this, and what we'll do is we'll, uh, we'll, we'll time this, hopefully. Let's see. And as you do it, you'll start to get a rhythm where you can get your hand over that cover. Now, is it the, is it the coolest method? Absolutely. Is it fraught with its issues, just like every other design? Absolutely. And you'll start seeing, I'll zoom out here. Oops, sorry. And you'll start seeing the air mattress inflate. And usually it takes me, based on this volume, I think my count was something like uh, 40 pumps. And one thing too is I push my hand down on the cover here first and then use my secondary hand and that also helps prevent air from escaping. Oh, so you got to get it just right. Now, is it a little bit wiggly and annoying? Absolutely. But it saves you the weight of another bag. Every design has its issue. The other design that I'm going to put for this guy, uh, it comes with a separate bag, but then you've got to put the bag on there. You got to make sure it's all sealed up. You know, air mattresses are not perfect, but it's, it's the best design I've found thus far. This thing, the old design, uh, this one, uh, the the designer from XPED, he drove a Mercedes on it and it didn't pop. So, I mean, it, it gives you high confidence. I did puncture somewhere. I got a little hole in this in the Arctic uh, from some super sharp stick. And I just I eventually repaired it and it was all good. So you always have to make sure to bring a repair kit for these things. Because again, because it is an inflatable item, it can get punctured. It absolutely behooves you. See? It definitely takes a while. It behooves you to carry a repair kit that works on this. Now, this fabric is not smooth, so you need a different type of repair kit than the Thermarest, which is pretty smooth plastic. Now, one of the things about airing up this air mattress is that you don't want to inflate it completely because when you inflate this air mattress completely, it's really hard and you start to roll off of it. So you see, it's still pretty mushy, but for me, this is about the right density or, whoa, or inflation level. So there you go. Now this, even though it looks too soft, when I lay down, for me, it's actually still too inflated. Now, is that pretty wacky? Yeah. So I actually wasted time here. I don't know how long. Oh, that wasn't bad, but just less than three minutes. Plus I'm talking, I actually overfilled this air mattress. So even though I want to say, oh yeah, it's, it's good and stiff, really uh, for an air mattress, that's not that great. So the hard thing is slightly deflating this. And what I do, is you don't want to open this it deflates too fast you can actually open this valve and there's a little pinchy guy in here somewhere it's right here and if you squeeze oops there you go if you squeeze here it can actually let some of the air out just a little bit let's see if i can get it to work yeah there we go it lets a little bit of air out now over time, overnight, I, I know this is going to deflate a little bit. Yeah, there you go. I might even open it. Okay, and let a little bit more air out. Now this looks pretty underinflated. However, once you are on here, ah, there we go. Now it conforms to my body a lot more. I'm still, let me measure it with a ruler here. I'm still, three inches off the ground and this is literally how I slept on three miles thick of ice in Antarctica for three months looking as sexy as this that's right in fact there's a 
picture me at the south pole there you can see me right there so totally legit but one of the challenges is with this fabric it is nylon and at minus 30 degrees about minus 20 it starts to do what's called cold soaking where even though you've got down and i can already feel the air mattress is warm that nylon is still cold so what i do is i put my z rest on top of it to cut that insulation or that uh, cold soaking effect now Fighting with a Z-Rest on an inflatable mattress is annoying. However, if you're going to an extreme environment like Antarctica or the Arctic or Denali or wherever and you puncture your air mattress and you can't figure out how to get that thing to not leak, what are you going to do? You're in real trouble. So not only does this pad keep me off the cold nylon but the insulation in the down but this is also an ultimate backup and also if i want to sit down i can just sit on this pad and not have a problem so there you have it i've got uh, i was you know ruler again this is ooh, almost four inches of insulation off the ground i could literally lay here when it's minus like minus 80 degrees outside with a raging storm minus uh, 100 wind chill on a chunk of ice that is literally miles thick and snuggle in my sleeping bag which i will now put on me just to show you that it does fit now this is a full length pad because in antarctica you don't want a short length pad climbing i'll put up with it hiking totally but expeditioning, no way. And there you go. So, the X-Pad mat, uh, definitely love it. Highly recommend it for extreme conditions or if you sleep super cold, this thing is awesome. By the way, I don't receive financial compensation or free pads or whatever from X-Pad. I just post these videos because I've got quite an experience in expeditioning, as you can see by the book there. I keep talking about the book. Yeah, sorry. I'm just kind of proud of it. And that way, you know, these are honest reviews and they're, I'm not just getting this stuff and putting it out there because it's fake. My name is Aaron Linsdow. I'm a polar explorer and motivational speaker. Please like and comment on my video. You know, scroll down. Hey, throwing steel around here. Scroll down to the bottom. Leave a comment. Give me some ideas for other video and also please hit the subscribe button that helps support my channel hey check that out uh, hit the subscribe button that helps support my channel uh please was it uh oh yeah <laughs> please support my channel on paypal venmo and thank you very much for watching happy expeditioning enjoy the experience